Don't worry, I haven't forgot. We are gonna get back on this uh, on a somewhat irregular basis, but finally, a new, uh, a new video game collection update. Here's some things that I picked up recently, so let's take a look. Yeah, so it's been like, what, um, seven, eight months since the uh, last update. It's not like I you know, wasn't buying games, but essentially, you know, you, you buy a house and then it's like, oh, well, maybe I should, <laughs> maybe I should cool down on the whole buying video games thing. Because uh, this is like what I would normally, you know, pick up like 10 to 15 games, a few big ones. But um, all this, you know, it took like seven months to get to where we are right now. So some of these have been sitting for a long time, uh, but we'll always do the collection updates. It's just that whole, it was that transitionary period of me obviously moving in and I just needed house supplies, and, you know, so been a little bit, but we're starting off with the Amazon roulette, as I like to call it, because they send your games in just this, and so I'm always weary buying games from Amazon, because they always show up demolished. Uh, but on sale is Persona 5 Royal for PlayStation 5. Didn't have it, not something where I need it right off the bat, right? You know, it's not gonna, I gotta pay full price for this when I've got like 13 versions of it already. So, uh, looking good, obviously the disc is, Loose, that's uh, pretty much a given, but Persona 5 Royal, 20 bucks, brand new, so uh, figured why not grab it new for 20 instead of waiting to get it for like, what, 10, 10 used, and PS5, I'm always a little bit uh, weary because just the cases are pretty weak, as we also like to remind ourselves every once in a while, right? Those cases have sickle cell anemia, they just do not travel very well, but Let's move on to this uh, Play Asia game. So I've got a few new ones, nothing, nothing insane here. But this Play Asia one, I certainly remember what this is. It's uh, <laughs> there, there she is. Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters One through Six Collection. Uh, it does have a download code inside for original wallpaper. Oh. So uh, this is going to be. It's going to have English on it from Play Asia. So. This is pretty much the easy way to get this game. The crazy uh, story behind this, for those that don't know, Square had pre-orders for the ESRB version on like a Sunday night uh, at like two, three in the morning EST. Now look, I'm, I, that's my prime time hours. I am like wide awake during that time. So I was able to be awake and secure one. I secured a PlayStation 4 version on Square site. Now that was the, a good play on my part because it turns out they canceled the a Chinese English version, uh, physical for PS4, and they still kept the Switch version, which means I picked the right one. And it's so crazy because I also did the, um, I did that video where I was appraising my entire collection. And a lot of you saw that one of my rarest games, or easily my rarest game at the time that was like most valuable, was a sealed copy of uh, Soul Silver on DS. In one fell swoop, this became my, oh, Jesus. Yeah, I should just grab it. This, one fell swoop. This came out, uh, resale market, 450, 500 bucks, something like that, crazy, crazy stuff. So, uh, <laughs> a, a game released in what, 2023 on PlayStation 4, like that, beat a sealed copy of Sold Silver. Wasn't planning on that being the case, but uh, at least at the time of recording, that is what's going on with that insane situation. Um, now we're getting a little kooky because I don't remember what a lot of this stuff is. Uh, and we do have uh, magazines from the monthly, uh, for the, from the Video Game History Foundation. I've got, those I didn't stop ordering, right? Like, cause they just, you keep it, you keep it on a subscription. So I've got a ton of those. <laughs> so we've got a, a lot to catch up on there. This one was a little tight, cutting it very close, but it is my very cheap Wii copy of Rockstar Table Tennis. This game is super fun. I played a lot of it on Xbox 360. I never ended up getting the Wii version. The Wii version always seemed to make so much sense to me because it is a table tennis game. Uh, and you know, it's like dirt cheap, right? So uh, as most of you also saw during the collection video, um, it's just something where now you, you can easily see like what I'm working with. Primarily, I've got a lot of PlayStation would really like to start working on more of my Nintendo and every, you know, occasionally Xbox, it's not a super high priority, but uh, slowly working on all of those. Now this one is silly, 
but it's a very cheap, effective way to add, uh, add a GameCube game to your collection, which is Outlaw Golf. And I'm not even gonna front, you know, this is a genuine, like I wanted this purchase that I may eventually play at some point. Uh, the thing is, so I think there's only a disc version for PlayStation 2 in PAL territories. I don't care to uh, collect those or pick those up or anything. So I'm like, oh, great. So I'll just get the GameCube, uh, GameCube version. I remember playing Outlaw Volleyball because my, uh, my uncle had it. He was into, you know, kind of weird, um, just, I don't know, sort of crude humor based games like that. And I, you know, as kind of silly as that game was, it was straight up fun and made me, uh, made me laugh when I was uh, younger. So I figured, why not get the Outlaw Golf version of this game? It's, it's totally lewd and it's meant to be sort of like a, you know, just one of those um, sort of childish, uh, childish games, but something that I would uh, see, myself, see myself trying at some point, so. Thank you for your purchase. And thank you for selling it to me. 40 winks on the original PlayStation. Now, you don't have to know anything about this game other than this awesome little uh, <laughs> quote they decided to pull out here. Move over Mario from the Nintendo official magazine, the June 99 issue. <laughs> and I just, like I saw this and I'm like, oh, it's on, and it's on a PlayStation 1, uh, well, technically the manual, but PS1 box art, you know, taking a quote out of the, um, Nintendo official magazine. So I thought that was silly, uh, you know, kind of a old school PS1 platformer. So always into those as well. I thought that's something that I, <laughs> I got to try that out at some point. Um, and I think we'll just knock this one out real quick. It says do not bend. Ironically, this is uh, one of the most nicely packaged things for what is something that's very small. Uh, box protector, we will be needing that in a second, so we'll just skirt that aside for now. Um, not sure if we're halfway, but let's check out a magazine from the Video Game History Foundation, which is just you know an old school video game magazine, so we'll see what we got waiting for us. These have been sitting for such a long time. Oh, daddy, that is what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm so hyped, my voice cracked for this. Super Mario Kart, uh, Nintendo Power. Ah, oh, this, this might just be one of the best magazines we have gotten so far. Uh, what issue is this? This is volume 41, so you know, definitely a low number. Ah, uh, that's so cool. That's a little, it's got a crease, it's got a little tear on it. You know, these are certainly uh, loved from back in the day. But my God, that is such a good pull. Okay. It's, it's fun because I didn't know I was getting that, so. Now I'll wait for the other one. We'll do that last, do the last magazine. Uh, now we've got another game here. Ooh, that was a clean tear. PSP, Beautiful Joe, Red Hot Rumble. This is from the era of me having to sell games to buy games, so I had this. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I still have my uh, original save file on my Memory Stick Pro Duo, so I could just boot this up and uh, play right where I left off, because I'm pretty sure I didn't finish the game either. Uh, but Red Hot Rumble. I should have actually went for a copy that didn't have a manual, because I think I kept all my PSP manuals. That was something I distinctly remember doing before I sold all my PSP games, was I kept the manuals. Because GameStop, you know, for them, didn't doesn't matter. There's no discrepancy in, uh, in values, even to this day, but back then more so, so it was kind of a good thing that I did that. Uh, another Wii title, this would be Wario Land Shake It. So this kind of goes into, uh, I guess what's the gonna be the primary goal with uh, collecting for a lot of the uh, older Nintendo systems. It's, it's, it seems weird to say older too for that, by the way, but um, you know, first party IP, so Wario Land Shake It figured this was something that was, uh, I guess on the more affordable end, right? Because especially for first party GameCube titles, gonna be a, a decent amount of money here and there for every type, uh, for all those games, but that's not too, uh, not too bad. Uh, let's work out with the box. I don't know which box is which, but I do know which, what's in each box. So, or what, you know, what I should be out expecting in total out of both of these boxes, which are things that I said in like episode uh, what was it? Two, three, it was one of the first times where we were doing the collection updates and I'm like, yeah, I don't need to buy complete in box Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games. I think I'm, 
I, I think I was a, a lion sack of shit back then because I, I want to. <laughs> I just love them so much. Seeing them complete is. Uh, it gets me jazzed up downstairs. So. Oh, we got two of them, so that means I. This one's. Uh, this was actually pretty cheap. Frogger 2, complete in box for the Game Boy Color. Now, a uh, little fun fact about your boy, and I've probably said this before, but I am a Frogger fan, and it's great being a Frogger fan. You know why? Because these games are, are not that expensive, so it really pays to be into Frogger. There we go, got them free. At least they package them nice. Frogger Adventures, Temple of the Frog. Temple of the Frog, go check that one out. Now this is where Frogger was cursed. So I, you know, I'm not a particularly, I'm not a huge fan of this era of Frogger where he was looking like this, but, um, and I can't remember the price because it was a while ago, but I remember it was like, I don't know, 40 something, 50, maybe less. I mean, these were cheap games. So for if, when we're talking complete in box, GBA, Game Boy Color, and it's a franchise, I actually do you know care about and enjoy. I want to play these games. So for me, this is dope. Now we're just gonna dive right into this one. And I did buy this this particular game very recent. I was I played this strategically. I knew I wasn't gonna film this in a long time, so I refrained from buying expensive games until I not only had enough stuff that was you know worth filming, but um, I waited to drop the cash on a big game. Uh, and having a lot of stuff that way if there was something wrong with this, you know, I at least have the time to take care of it. I feel like I'm... This feels illegal, almost. Well, well, well. WarioWare Twisted CIB, baby. One of those, uh, you know, unu not unusual, but uh, different GBA games, right? So it uses the, um, the, the pack is thicker because it's got a shaking uh, accelerometer functionality. So, because that's what the entire game is based around. So it comes with a slightly bigger box and that's where it's, you, if you want to get a box protector for this, you got to buy a one specially made for it. So that's why this guy was like three something dollars, but uh, why are you aware twisted? Let's take a look at that cartridge. It's got a little bit of warping. I'm sure you can see that from just the, the light, but there's our manual. There's our cart. A little bit of extra bubbles there. So, I'm sure some of you might have uh, seen this game before. You might be familiar. So there's the, um, the extra little pack where it's a thick boy. That's why it comes in a slightly uh, slightly larger box, but it's just so cool. Love the WarioWare games. I, I, I don't think I've met anyone that doesn't like them. That you know, Obviously, they're super short, right? But they're just so ridiculous and, and quirky. And again, I've never met anybody that didn't like these games. And this one is just, uh, it's great. I, I did have it too when I was a kid, but of course I didn't keep any of this junk. And I didn't keep the uh, actual game either, but uh, I figured why not jump on this one, so. Let's also get it in the box protector right away. Bam. All right, looking good, looking clean. And this wasn't even a bad condition copy. Again, there's just some slight warping, so the, the box is a little bit depressed uh, on the front, which you could probably just put some stuffing, uh, stuffing inside the box and push it out a little bit further or get a heat press or something, right? So that can usually fix up these, uh, you know, older cardboard based games. But the box protector always, in, in terms of improving the uh, appearance, it, it just goes a long way. Oh, actually, you know what I did too? I already messed up. You don't want this flap to be front facing. So you swap it. Make sure to do that with all the, uh, make sure to do that with the uh, PS1 long box games as well. There you go. That looks a lot cleaner. All right, uh, I'll find out what these are. But we're about to find out. Oh, another Wii game. Uh, oh, you know what, actually, I think I remember what this is. Elibits, Elibits from uh, Konami. This was uh, one of those titles where, and you know, 
I think for a lot of people, these games tend to live rent-free in your head. If you, um, like one of the first console cycles that you remember from the very start, right? So before the machine even ships and you're there for all the pre-release, the news, the rumors, and um, that first initial launch cycle where you've got the launch games, but also titles that are expected in the first six months to a year. Elibits was one of those games for the Wii, next to things like Red Steel, Excite Truck, and you know, obviously Zelda and this and that, but Elvitz was one of those third-party games, which, you know, it's like, oh, it's a unique title for uh, for the Wii, right? Not shipping on anything else. It's gonna be using the, uh, ooh, napkin. Thank you for the, um, gonna be using the Wii mode, the motion, right? So you use a little zapper and you uh, pick up all the uh, little Elvitz. I mean, I, I'm just assuming, because I, <laughs> I, this is one game I never got, so. Uh, and I, I, I thought it looked cool. I just, you know, I ain't got, I ain't got any money until now where I'm a grown adult and decided to pick it up to place it on my shelf and then maybe someday I'll get to it. <laughs> All right, got this one free, my lord. Uh, not even really much of a high value game, but another PS1 long box. This one is Jupiter Strike. So, you know, again, there's like uh, maybe 20 to 30 PS1 long boxes that I'm looking at and still uh, thinking about getting and I say that for like in total, right? So I've already got like uh, what nine ten or something like that So I've already got like a good portion of the ps1 long boxes that I'm even you know interested in Because uh, you know I've said before but I'm, I'm not looking to buy games just to put them on a shelf I'm just trying to be more mindful of like what looks good. What would I actually uh, consider playing at some point? Uh, or you know in the, in the short term, maybe I, I'm thinking about jumping into this stuff soon So this one looked interesting to me um, and I'm, that's another thing too. I'm, I'm trying to be very mindful of some of the um, Especially uh, PS2 GameCube Xbox era right around the, that, that time. It's it's interesting. We're seeing a lot of publishers uh, Bring back some of these games with just yeah, it doesn't matter if they like do a physical release or not But they'll just like ship them digitally um, but they're doing remasters for things that I didn't think were going to get remasters, like Grim Grimoire, right? Like, that's just one example I can think of, uh, think of right off the top of my head. But, you know, th we actually are seeing some of these more what I guess maybe would have been kind of obscure, or at least the kind of titles that you think, yeah, we're not going to see a modern port of that, but sure enough, we are. So, um, with that in mind, I'm, that's, you know, some of the stuff I'm, I'm thinking about. Like, oh, I, maybe they're not going to bring this thing back, so maybe I should pick up a copy, like... 40 Wings, for example, and I don't expect Frogger to come back in any meaningful way for these particular games. Although, it would not shock me whatsoever if WarioWare Twisted came to NSO uh, somewhat soon. I'm laying everything out, but I forgot to do our last magazine for the Video Game History Foundation. So let's take a look at this. And it is Tekken 3 from EGM. Oh my god, what a great PlayStation 1 game. I'm not even a fighting game fan, but out of all the fighters that I've been able to kind of vibe with, and uh, one that I genuinely played, it is Tekken 3. Tekken 3 by far, actually. Uh, you know, I played a little bit of 2, uh, mostly 3, and then I think you know, between 5 on the PS2 and also the uh, PSP port, um, that's about as much. Uh, although I did get the Platinum on, what, Tekken 6 and... Seven, but uh, those are pretty straightforward. You can play those for like, you know, 15, 20 hours and walk away with a platinum. Probably less time, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, less time than that, uh, less, less time than that for a platinum, my lord. Uh, but Tekken 3, good stuff there. All right, here is everything laid out, looking good, spicy, some might even say delicious. Three complete in box Game Boy games that I'm now gonna, you know, casually do so with these i will admit there's just no way financially i'm gonna pick up a ton of these um but there's uh kind of like the long box uh ps1 games there's like maybe 20 to 30 that i've kind of jotted down where i'm like i want to get those at some point which will still be expensive because if they have the box right away the value is boom 100 plus easily for most games um but you know a sizable update here nothing nothing insane but over time we will uh, slowly start filling in these shelves where like the console boxes I don't even necessarily want those there it's just to fill space so we have a lot of room to you know over time do some of these collection updates which won't be on the what did I say before every other month I think we'll yeah you know, we'll do another one faster than the last time right or this time I should say but um, we'll kind of work our way into this uh, slowly, but got some decent stuff this time around. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't just yet, please consider subscribing for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.